do. Oh, no, thank you. I'll keep it. Uh, we're the new tenants. I'm Miss Susie Smith. Wait, let me bag in, please. Oh, wonderful, Yoli. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That door's so heavy, I didn't know whether I could open it by myself. What's the matter? She was only holding the door open for you. I was only thanking him for it. Don't you ever get out of the front row of the chorus? Front row? I can't even get out of the back row. Is, is our box ready for us? Yes, Miss Hyden. Uh, I'm Miss Smith. Yes, Miss Smith. You don't know me because I didn't come with Miss Hyden. May we have our keys? I've already given the keys to the other young lady. Oh, well, Martha's here already. And we can go. What time did the Baroness arrive? The Baroness. Yes, Baroness Carinier. Oh, uh, Miss Carinier. Yes. I didn't know she was a Baroness. <laughs> well, she's very modest about it. Miss uh, uh, Baroness Carinier came in about an hour ago. Oh, come along, Susie. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Ferenczi? Hey. Yoli, who is that? A customer at the shop. She knows you're a model there? Yes, what of us? Oh, dear, but... Oh! Put the bag there. I wonder where Martha is. Oh! It would seem Her Excellency is taking a bath. <laughs> oh, isn't this wonderful? Our very own home. Yeah. Yoli. Yeah? Aren't you just a little bit frightened? What? Oh, three girls like us moving into a place like this. Oh, well, we'll manage. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, isn't that a lovely kitchen? You know, maybe we should have taken that furnished flat, though, huh? Well, I could have paid for that myself without you and your friend. I'm sick of being driven home in great big expensive cars to a moth-eaten tenement house. <laughs> Gee, that place I was in was nothing but a toothbrush on a washstand. And believe me, it's no fun coming home to a toothbrush. Well, when men drop you off here, they'll realize they've been out with somebody. <laughs> what good is that thing? That? Oh, well, most girls in the theaters have little dogs. But I like this better than a dog. He doesn't bark, and I don't have to feed him or take him out for a run. Ah, oh, he's really very nice. Mm-hmm. You can have this wall, and your friend can have that. What in the name? Who left this here? I, uh, I, I guess that's Martha's. Martha's? Your baroness wouldn't be a street peddler by any chance, would she? Oh, just temporarily. But she is a baroness. Mm. Well, I've heard of beer bands, coal bands, meat bands, but never a necktie baroness. Oh, no, she is a real baroness. Her family lost everything they had in the war, and, and she has to sell neckties. Well, I hope she doesn't drown herself in there. I'll go see. Hey, Martha. Come in. Oh. For heaven's sake, close the door. Everything will get soaked. Susie, is that you? Yes, are you all right? You must be parboiled. Susie. Yeah? Beautiful hot water. Go in there and open the window for us. Oh! I can't even see the window. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the window. That's the medicine closet. Hello, Susie. <laughs> is that you? Yes. Yeah, hello. hello. Oh, Martha, this is Julie Hyden. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> I'll be right out and one of you can try. Only be careful of the mixer. It's very unexpected. <laughs> try it the least little bit. Here. Oh! <laughs> I hope you told the Baroness of our agreement. Since I pay half the rent and you two pay the other half, I'm first in the bathroom at all times. Yeah, I told her. Susie, don't move. Stay right where you are. Why? What's the matter? Has anybody sat down yet? It's an old superstition my gypsy nurse told me. When you move into a new home, the first thing you must do is count the corners of a room. If you sit down first, that spoils it. Afterwards, you sit down and make a wish. What do we sit on? On the floor, on your... Oh, anything. Now, go ahead. <laughs> all right. One, two, three, four. No, wait a minute. Five, six, seven, eight. Not today. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wish for a hat shop, like the one I used to work in. I'm tired of a lot of silly men trying to make love to me. I want to be independent of men. Go on, Yuli. I'm going to wish for a rich husband. One who'll buy me a five-story house, lots of furs and jewels, a little cash in the bank. <laughs> One who's not too hard to look at. All right, your turn, Martha. All right. One, two, three, four. I'm going to wish for the impossible. A good home. While I'm about it, I might as well wish for a man. 
Someone to love and look after. And children. <laughs> well. You know, even after we do get our beds in here, this place is still going to be pretty empty. But then I don't know. With a sofa over there, and a table over there with a radio on it, and a big Oriental rug. Where is all this furniture in storage? Well, it's in different stores. Just waiting for us to get some money. Mm -hmm. well, I have something for you, Julie. Here's my share of the rent. That's right, I think. Is, is that all you've got? Well, isn't it enough? I'm told oh, you no, enough. honey. She means have you got any left for food? Have you? Not three o'clock yet, is it? Lots can happen before supper. Is that lettuce? Yes, it is. Oh, Martha, what did you get that for? Oh, my rabbits. Rabbits? Have you got rabbits? A dozen of them. One of my odd jobs. Makes me so mad I lost one of them today. One of your rabbits? No, one of my odd jobs. Oh. You see, Martha's giving French lessons for the last three weeks. Oh, that ought to pay very well. It did. Only I don't speak French. What? My conscience was clear. I studied the lessons every day before I gave them to the children. I didn't know it, but it seems the children have a French aunt. Well, the day the aunt arrived and started to ask questions in French. It didn't even pay for the last week. And if I don't hurry up with this letter, I'll lose another job today. Goodbye. Bye, Bye. I brought your lunch, Imogene. Do you think I was never coming? And how are we feeling today, Mrs. Shinglefinger? And how are we feeling today, Mrs. Shinglefinger? Yeah, please. And how are we feeling today, Mrs. Shinglefinger? Much better, eh? Oh, much worse, Dr. Imray. Uh, I, you're, you're late. Oh, I'm sorry, but I've been awfully busy. Do you think there's any hope for Mrs. Shinglefinger? Well, I was practicing my bedside manner just in case. Have you fed them? Well, I'll finish right away. They're not fed on time. We can't give injections on time. Well, I really couldn't help it. You see, I moved today. Imogene's reacting beautifully to that anti-serum. Remind me to give her seven and a half cc's more tomorrow. We'll see what that does. What do you mean you moved? I think an apartment with two girls at 270 Corral Street. Corral Street? Across the river? Uh-huh. You mean you're not in the attic anymore? Nope. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I tried to tell you last week. You didn't seem much interested. Oh, that was when I was starting a new experiment. Oh, well, all this week you've been away every time I came to look after the rabbit. But what, what, what am I going to do? Oh, I'll come just the same. But... Until I get a regular job. But there are other times when I, when I need you to help me for, for intravenous injections and, and, and for... Oh, well, you know, I, I, I thought you were interested in my experiment. Oh, I am. Only this apartment has the most beautiful bathroom, all piled and nickel. Oh, not very considerate of you. Just when you're getting the knack of things. Besides, you need looking after yourself. Oh, I'm perfectly all right. Oh, you're not either. Look at you. No color at all. You need a diet with a little iron in it. I am on a diet. Sort of one. Um, Dr. Imray, do you suppose you could give me the, the money you owe me for taking care of the rabbits? Oh, certainly. Oh, I, I guess... I mean, never mind. Tomorrow will be all right. I'll, uh, leave the money downstairs to the druggist. Don't you want me to feed them tomorrow? No. Well, the money doesn't matter. That's not the question. I've reached the point where there must be an absolute accuracy. I'll have to do it myself. You think these are pets to play games with? Don't you realize what I'm trying to do with these rabbits? I can prove my theory of molecular... character of antibodies. Yes. I can't let anything interfere with it. Not anything, you understand? Yes. Corral Street, huh? It's quite a jump from this district, isn't it? Well, I know I really can't afford it, but with three of us, no, I thought... No, no, it's none of my business. You have your own life to live. Yes. Well, isn't there anything else I can do? Hmm. No, no, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Johnny. Here's our very own doorbell. Will you go into our very own lobby and open our very own door? Yoli, how do you work this gadget? John Boston. You can't open the door till you close it. What? Say so you have to close the door first before you can open it. Oh, Hello, John. Hello, Yoli. Carl. Hello, Yoli. Uh, Susie. Hello. How do you do? My name's Smith. Susie Smith. My name's Lanyon. Carl Lanyon. How do you do? Susie, how many times have I told you it isn't necessary for a girl to give her name? Well, I, I think a young actress ought to give her name. After all, the theater program doesn't, the radio doesn't, the newspapers don't. Someone's got to mention it. Goodbye, gentlemen. My name's Smith. <laughs> well... She's one of the girls who took the flat with me. I hope you don't mind our coming up. Of course not. Uh, only I can't ask you in because there's furniture all over the place. What are you doing up here now, anyway? We're not supposed to be at Ben Horvath till five. Yes, I know, but... Uh, I wanted to talk with you. I'll wait outside. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm going to Ben's party, too. You suppose you could get uh, my name Schmidt to come along? I'll ask her. Au revoir, then. Au revoir. Au revoir. Wait till you see the new dress I'm going to wear. Oh, I want to, but... Yoli, I have a much better idea. Why? Let's forget about all of party and drive out to the country for dinner. Just the two of us. But I like Ben's parties. They're, they're always a lot of fun. Oh, yes, I know, but, but I want to be alone with you. Well, what about my new dress? That's why she gave it to me. What? Madame Banner gave me one of the new models to wear when she heard I was going to Ben's party. Oh. I see. What's the matter, darling? We'll have all the rest of the evening together. Surely. Goodbye. Yoli, why didn't you tell me about him before? Oh, what? Oh, you mean Count Lanyon? Why, the account? Mm-hmm. One of the few titles left in Budapest with any money. <laughs> I wouldn't care what he was. He's nice. He made me feel like a lady even in my kimono. He liked it. And incidentally, Miss My Name Schmidt will be delighted to join his excellency for cocktails at Mr. Ben Hover. What dress shall I wear? Your other one and your best manners, which does not include listening at keyholes. <laughs> You'll be proud of me. Well, there'll be lots of society people. The men will be society. And the women? The women will be the women that society men like to be with when they're not with society women. <laughs> Is there somewhere a countess? Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean is he married? No, Carl's engaged to the Countess Helena Reddick. Oh, he would be. I guess I won't hurt to accept his invitation this once in a while. How do you do, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Susie Schmidt? Well, I'm so glad Carl could bring you, Miss Schmidt. Oh, thank you. So am I. I hope he warned you of the first demand I make for my more attractive guests. What? It was known as a visit to the Jade Room. Oh, no getting on out of it. occasion, I make a concession. You needn't come alone. We'll take you over this. You know your way around. We'll see you later. Oh, I got some new pieces since you were here last year. How nice. There really is a Jade collection. <laughs> Only I admit, I don't take people there just to look at it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I have a piece here. It was taken from the tomb of one of the most famous of the Chinese emperors, the Ming Dynasty. Very handy for dissecting a favorite who was no longer a favorite. Oh, I acted for this far, thank Yes. And here's a piece of early Manchu. Come along, Ben. Your five minutes is up. Who said anything about five minutes? It really has an extraordinary history. You see this little figure here? 
please go ahead. I'm very interested, really. Yes, I can see you are. Run along and dance. Thank you. Oh, the, the date is beautiful. Has Carl known her long? No, he met her this afternoon. I was trying to remember where I'd seen her before. Probably in the chorus of the Hoshani Theatre. No, it was the look in her eyes that was familiar. All women in love have the same look. I always feel as though I were looking at the ghost of someone else. Yuli, I haven't seen you since that last party here. That fatal party. Fatal? Well, you met John. I admire your taste, but what happens when he goes away? I'll still have my job. I was talking to you a few minutes before you were introduced to him. Do you remember? We were in this room. I remember. What you said then, I hoped that rather pleasant things were in store for us. Perhaps I did too then. I said it was a fatal party for you and John. <laughs> and for me. Now, well, John, we were just talking about you. Wondering when you plan to go back to South America. Well, you had the first to wish me bon voyage. Oh, no, no. I might have hoped that you'd never come back to Budapest. But I'd be the last person in the world to want you to go now. I'm much too interested in your happiness. Thank you. I always like to hear a man say that, even if it isn't true. Aren't you in rather a hurry to choose my successor? Ben and I are old friends. No quotation marks around that either. I suppose it's none of my business. Let's get out of here. What? I've had enough of this. Yuri, I don't know what it is, but at a party like this, you seem like a stranger. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Follow you around goggle-eyed like a, like a lovesick bride? Why were you so anxious to come here tonight? Were you looking for another adventure? What were you looking for the night that we met here? Someone like me, wasn't it? Someone with whom you could enjoy your vacation. Someone, you said, who'd understand that you'd have to go away and wouldn't cry on your shoulder when you did. That's what you've got. Are you complaining now? I'm not complaining. Don't shout. I'm not shouting. I'm merely trying to tell you that I'm sick of your everlasting flippancy. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Or would you like to stay and admire Mr. Horvath's jade? I must prefer the jade to you in your present bad temper. Very well. Oh, Ben. I want to say goodbye. Goodbye, but you just arrived. Well, I only plan to drop in for a minute. Where's Julie? She's still looking at your jade. Oh, well, nice to see you. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Ben. What? I must go. I only plan to drop in for a moment. I see. Well, goodbye, Yulin. Goodbye. Thank you. Would you like that better? On the village where I was born, that's the only dance we knew. I didn't think you were brought up in Budapest. Why? Well, you seem more like a... More like a peasant girl? Mm. That's what I am. I don't know why I told you that, except... I don't want to pretend with you. Your thing, sir? Thank you. I just. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Ben. I'll be late. The traffic was simply dreadful. Oh, hello, you Hello, John. Hello. So glad you could come. I've got a new piece of jade I want to uh -uh, show you. Uh -uh. That's where the joke ends. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry like a mistress, Susie. Hurry up. 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 H
Jim Ray couldn't pay me for feeding the rabbits. Oh, I'm in an awful rush. And I thought maybe you could introduce me to someone I could sell my ties to. Oh, I know a chorus boy. Well, but what about the artist? What about uh, Shannon, the magician? Oh, I don't know him. I've hardly ever spoken to him. I told him, Martha, I told him. Told who what? Carl. I told him that I loved him. I had to because I didn't think I'd ever see him again. Only now I won't anyway. I'm glad I told him. Yoli will think I'm a fool, but you understand, don't you, Martha? No. Here, pat on the back, will you, honey? All he had to do was look at me to know that I loved him, so why shouldn't I tell him? Oh, honey, don't get it in my hair, will you? Oh, no. See if all those hooks are buttoned up in the back. Here's one, but hold still. All right, all right, I'll hold still. He didn't have time to say anything. I just, I just told him and ran. There. Oh, now, if I could only smile. Oh, but Susie. Oh, my God. Would it be my too God. much trouble to introduce me to Mr. Shannon? Oh, but Susie. I told you for the last time that they punched you. Can't you ever be on time? I'm sorry. Susie, isn't that Shandor? <laughs> Couldn't you introduce me to him? I couldn't. So I, I could. Shandor, mm. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Miss Martha Green. I'm sorry, but I have no time for autographs now. Oh, I don't want your autograph. What? Well, next time you want my autograph. You'll have to wait till after the show. Could you find a place for my friend to wait where she can watch the show? She's a personal friend of Mr. Shandor. Oh, I will try to find her seating one of the boxes. Right. Come on. Gentlemen, I shall attempt an illusion that I discovered whilst traveling through the wilds of India. But I must have absolute silence, because the slightest noise might result in injury or perhaps even death to the young lady. Are you ready? Ready. Thank you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, lest you think my illusions are mere mechanical tricks, I shall prove to you that even from the distance of a few feet, the hand is still quicker than the eye. Now, who will come up here and see for themselves, if they can? The young man in the grey suit with the pretty girl by his side. <laughs> no, perhaps you're doing all right where you are. <laughs> ah, the young lady that wanted my autograph. Come now. You look lonely there. Oh, come along. Oh. Well, what's this? Oh, you've bought your own equipment. You're going to give me a little demonstration in magic? I was afraid if I left it here, someone might steal it. She was afraid you left it here, someone might steal it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> come along. <laughs> now, don't worry. It'll be perfectly safe here. <laughs> well, how careless of me. But it must be around somewhere. Let's look for it. Not there. That's it, isn't it? Yes. Now, what have you in this case? Neckties. Neckties? What do you do with them? Try and sell them. Really? I need neckties. So supposing instead of me showing you my magic, you show me your neckties. Here? Well, why not? Well, I don't suppose if there's any more public than the sidewalk. <laughs> that is quite an ingenious contraption. Now, here is a very lovely crepe tie. A crepe tie. Does it shrink? Oh, absolutely not. It's made by one of the best companies. It doesn't shrink. We'll find out. It shrank all right. <laughs> oh, that was two Cronin. Two Cronin. Well, let me see something a little more expensive. Here are two of my better ties. Guaranteed wrinkle-proof. Wrinkle-proof? 
We'll find out about that. Now, I have here an ordinary silk scarf, which I playfully call my wrinkle tester. <laughs> we fold it like that. Again, like that. We put the ties in there. They're still there. Yes. Crumple them. Again. Ready? Well, that makes six cronen more. Six cronen for what? For my ties. Oh, yes, your ties. Well, uh, do you mind if I have a drink? Oh, not at all. Will you have one? So I can get him one. Would you mind tasting that for me? Just a sip. Does that taste like a necktie to you? Oh, I don't know what a necktie tastes like. Well, it has a very odd flavor. We'll find out. These are your neckties? Yes. They're all there? Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, but aren't you going to buy them? Oh, why, of course. How much? These will be eight cronen. Eight cronen. May I have your purse? Yes. Eight cronen. Two, four, six, eight, and two for luck. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Shandor. Now, what shall I do with the ties? Just leave them with the stage doorkeeper on your way out. Thank you. Well, he bought some. I wish you could have seen your face when that suitcase disappeared. I don't care. I saw them. Anyway, look. I know. They're in Denver. Magic. I'll show him some magic. Oh, that's a cheap trick. Don't worry, honey. You wait for me upstairs in the dressing room. I'll be up just as soon as I'm finished. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. What the? Oh, thank you, where are you? Oh, stop yelling for Venkat. You fired him two hours ago. Well, how am I to get out of this? Don't ask me. You're the magician. <laughs> but you're funny, don't you? Venkat. Yeah, yeah. What? Can't they stand still? Oh, it's you. Venkat, you perfectly well. I had a supper party and he would have to dress me. Blast. Blast. Everlastingly blast. My white ties aren't back from the laundry yet, and that one's all covered with makeup. Willie! Willie! Have you got a white tie? Not for you. Oh, why didn't you say so at first? This tie will cost you ten cronen. What? Of course, you might send out for one if you think any of the shops are open now. All right, you let me have it, and Benkett will pay you when he comes back. Oh, you don't suppose Benkett will come back after you've discharged him? Will you please give me that tie? A manservant isn't what you need. Give me that tie. Yes, you'll probably magic it away from me anyway. What makes you think a magician can't tie his own tie? If you'll just stand still, I can do it perfectly. What you need is a woman around, someone who understands taking care of men, someone who can keep a man's place neat and clean. I will have you understand that Binkett worked for Prince Radzo before he came to me for five years. Shall be why I was so lazy, too many other servants. Tell you what I'll do. I'll let you have that tie for only four cronen if you'll give me his job. Benkett's job? Yes. You? But Benkett wakes me up in the morning. He cooks my meals. He acts as my dresser in the theater. Why, he even puts me to bed when I I'm... can do it. How long is it since you've had a decent chicken paprika? Handkerchief. What do you know about chicken paprika? My father taught me how to make it the only proper way, and, uh, crepe Suzette. I don't imagine Benkett could do much for those. Crepe Suzette. Cigarette. What is this all about, anyway? Why do you want the job? What sort of girl are you? Oh, I know. You're stage struck, aren't you? Oh, oh no. Naturally, I'm fascinated seeing you do your tricks, but you see, I really need a job. And I'm so used to looking after children. That children? I perhaps... oh, oh, I mean, it would be wonderful if I could work for Shanda the Great. For you. <laughs> you are stage struck. But I'll overlook that. Joseph Street, number four, at nine o'clock in the morning. What about the ten cronen? You said four if you got the job. All right. I'll make it ten. Let me have your purse. Two, four, six, eight, and two for luck. Yes. We'll discuss terms later. Meanwhile, clean up around here. Uh oh, Mr. Shander. About that tie. You don't owe me for that. It's yours. I found it in the drawer. <clears throat> that makes ten cronen that you owe me, then. 
And remember, you're only here on trial. Good night. Good night. Some mail, Miss Schmidt. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night, Louis. Susie. I've been waiting for you. I... I'll drive you home. trouble with us is the trouble we... with you is you always know what the trouble with somebody is. We talk too much. At least you do. Always analyzing. Say that again? Always analyzing. What's the matter with that? What do I analyze? Oh, I don't know. Just analyze. Do I really love you? Do you really love me? So we do, so we don't. What difference does it make as long as we have such lovely times together? Let's just let it go at that. What? Being happy. Mm. I suppose that's a very good place to let it go at, if that's how you want me to feel. Well, I... I'll never talk about love again. I promise you, from now on, I'll be known as Sensible John. <laughs> Wait a minute. Cousin John. I'm Marie, don't you remember? Marie? I've run away from Swissel. Oh, 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 but you've grown. I only had money enough to take the train to Vienna, and I came on a river barge from there. Um, this is Miss Mary Armand, kind of cousin. I'm not a cousin. We are not related at all, except by marriage. What are you doing here? I found out you'd come back to Budapest. What? When Mother and I visited you five years ago, you were so kind to me. And ever since I... Who is this? Uh, oh, this is Miss Shirley Hyden. Oh, how do you do? Are you engaged? Uh, well, we are... Oh, don't worry, I understand. You arrange things differently in Budapest. What made you leave your mother? She sold my orchard that I planted myself and gave the money to Monsieur Dubois. And now they are going to get married. Just a moment. Who is Monsieur Dubois? He says he used to be an opera tenor, but now he only sings when he gets drunk on mother's apricot brandy. What am I going to do with you? I know all about raising pigs. And I can run a tractor. Now, that's fine. That, that's just the thing for Budapest. That's... But I suppose I could send her to a boarding school or, 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 or something. You think I came to Budapest to go to school? That's where you're going to go, just the same. In the meantime, if... perhaps your cousin would like something to eat. Tell your... your friend that I'm not your cousin. I understand. Uh, uh, if you're hungry, I can wake up Fritz and... Oh, no, and... do that. The coffee house at the corner is still open. Let's take her there. That's all right, but, but afterwards... Oh, I suppose I could send her to a hotel or... Oh, no, I can't stay here. I won't be in the way. And besides, they won't let me in without any luggage. That's right. Well, I am going to a hotel then. Come along, let's get something to eat. of my engagement to him. Engagement? To be married? It was not a real engagement. He had a motorcycle, and he was supposed to drive me here. Only he got a friend. You mean we might have Monsieur Pierre with us now? If he hadn't lost his nerve. He's one of those warriors. 
What will happen if your cousin John is not there? Suppose I can't get the job. What will we live on? Men me sick. I feel a certain sympathy for Pierre. Oh, uh, you didn't. Just hasn't got any initiation. I mean, uh, she means initiative. You know what I said? What? I said, suppose Cousin John had asked a lot of questions. Then he doesn't have gone to South America. That's right. I told him the only man I'd marry is somebody like you, who is not afraid to do things. I can't stand people don't know what they want. Uh, wouldn't you like to have some more schnitzel? I certainly would. Schnitzel for mademoiselle. Mr. Shandor. Mr. Shandor. Don't go away. Cold orange juice. Did the ice tinkle? Yes. Oh. Oh, it's you. Your back ready. And very well, if you must know, I was drunk last night. Wheeling, wriggling drunk. But I see no reason to regret it. After all, I am an artist, and it's my privilege to dissipate my talents as I see fit. Oh, yes. Is it not? But your bath will get cold. After being here three weeks, you should realize that my bath is accustomed to waiting for me. <coughs> Eggs. Eggs. Take them away. You'll either have to eat them. Eat them or what? I make them disappear up your sleeve. Did I ever tell you that you annoy me intensely? 27 months, 36. Will you pay attention to that me? That makes 57 kronen you owe the liquor store for just this week. Well, how did you get in here anyway? The way I do every morning with my key. If you don't give me some money for the gas, they're going to turn it off tomorrow with three kronen. Yes, what I mean is how did you get in here in the first place? And 15 kronen for the electric light. You know, my life was very simple until you came. And now ceaselessly I hear unpleasantnesses. I owe this, I owe that. You'll be telling me I owe you something in the end. You do, four kronen for last week. Now, at first, I thought you were infatuated with me. But there's more to it than that. Although that in itself should explain everything. There's some subtle plot afoot to undermine me. Well, it's very simple. I needed a job, and heavens knows you needed someone to look after you. Uh, would you mind going back into the bedroom? I'd like to clean up in here. Isn't this my own home anymore? Do you think you can shift me from room to room like a piece of furniture? I asked you a question. Why don't you get dressed and go out with some fresh air? All right. All right. I admit that I drank too much last night, so nothing I say matters. You know, a woman once told me that these were hands that Chrysler would have envied. It's very easy for you to criticize my drinking, but you never bother to ask me why I drink. Why? It would be a pity if the doctors were right. What? I hadn't meant to tell anyone, but, well, my family is cursed with a strange affliction. With the Habsburgs, it's hemophilia. With us, it affects the nerves. The vasomotor nerves. Get on with your sweeping. But Mr. Shander, what, what... It's nothing important, except that perhaps tonight, tomorrow, or perhaps even a year from now, these hands might suddenly lose their cunning. Oh, what are you talking about? It's nothing, nothing. I had hoped the curse would not fall on me. Oh, 
ahead, Mr. Shander. Don't you believe those doctors? Nothing can happen to your hands. It would be too bad if you lost your job because my hands failed. Well, I'm not thinking of my job here. Let me have them. Who was the doctor you went to? Was he a really good one? What was his name? He's a specialist in this sort of thing. He, he calls it hereditary polydigitalitis. Poly? Digitalitis. Digitalitis. Well, this is better than any doctor. Get that muscle under the little finger. Haven't I always told you how important that is? Oh, yes. That woman who told you Chrysler would have envied hands, did she massage them too? Yes. As well as this? She had finesse. That's what counts. Oh. Uh, what did you say it was? What? P Polly. Oh. Polydigitalitis. What have you got on your hair? It smells it's like... It's egg shampoo. Ooh. Ah, good afternoon, Your Excellency. Hello, Joseph. Count Lani just telephoned. He'll be a few minutes late. Oh. Well, thank you. Joseph, you shouldn't call me Your Excellency. As you wish, Your Excellency. <laughs> I hope you don't say that to all young ladies. How else would I address a lady who enjoys the, uh, the admiration of Count Langye? <laughs> I know you're flattering me, Joseph, but I like it. Makes me feel as if I were... <laughs> well, never mind. Just don't stop, huh? Is there anything I can get for your excellency? No, thank you. Oh, yes, Joseph. Will you make some of those little anchovy thingamabobs? You know, the ones Count Langye likes so much. Certainly. <laughs> Long here comes, will you? Tell him that I couldn't wait. No other message? No. Well, what is it now? She's here. Who's here? Miss Karenyi. Who do you think I meant? She's up with the rabbits. Well, all right, supposing she is here. Does that mean you have to stand there grinning like an idiot? Get out. Thanks. Uh, what are you doing here? I happened to be coming by and thought I'd like to see the rabbit. Oh. Mm. 
Don Juan stealing Perky. Perky? You might think these are pets to be played with. But they're so cute. Fine laboratory assistant you'd make. I always fed them on time and gave them their medicine. You're improving, there's no doubt of that. Hmm. Oh, I think I'd better weigh him. Check his heartbeat. so quiet for you. They've uh, missed you. I've missed them. It isn't only the rabbits. Things have seemed different to me since you went away. Oh, really, Rudy? Yes. Uh, may I have the stethoscope, too? I uh, was wondering, uh, maybe you could begin taking care of them again. couple of patients last week. I think I could make it four kroner a week this time, if you'd like. Well, I'd love to, but you see, I've got a job now. I mean, I couldn't come regularly. Well, couldn't you come and visit us anyway? I wasn't sure you wanted me to. Naturally, I... What, what, what is this job? I'm working for Paul Shandor. Paul Shandor? You, you don't mean the, 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 the ma magician? The one that calls himself Shander the Great. Oh, isn't what he calls himself, it's what everybody else calls him. What in the name of heaven kind of work are you doing for him? Oh, I cook for him and look after his apartment, and when he's at the theater, I'm sort of a dresser. A, a dresser? You, you mean you... Oh, lots of actors have women dressers. All you do is look after their clothes and help them into them. Well, I mean with their coats and... I guess you don't know much about life in the theater. No, I, I certainly don't. What were you thinking of to take a job like that? You told me I had to live my own life. I didn't mean you should go out and be a ballot for a, 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 a cheap card sharper. He's not a card sharper. What he does takes just as much science as raising rabbits. I'm using these for experiments. That's not raising them. Well, you started with only two, and now you've got 24. But that, that, that's merely a biological coincidence. Why, it, it's preposterous, that's what it is. You're working for this d d d hocus pocus artist. He's not a pocus hocus artist. He's a very fine magician. You're in love with him. Oh, you must be crazy. You think I don't know the symptoms? What kind of a psychologist do you think I am? Besides, I've seen him on the stage. I recognize the type at once. He makes love to everybody he meets. He does not make love to everybody. Oh, so you don't want to think that about him. I see. Jealousy reflex already. Oh, huh. you know so much. I came over here just to see you. And you say things like that to me. Now, you said you'd come over to see the rabbits. Anyway, all you've talked about is Shander. All right. Suppose I was in love with him. What business would it be of yours? You'd probably put it down on a chart. Are you? No. Look at you every time you speak of him. Pupils dilated, your face suffused. Tell me a symptom you haven't got. Why, if I ever saw a case of emotional malady... How can I tell you the symptoms I've got? I'm so sick of you and your science. Go ahead and dance. I'm all right. Here, I'll take care of your champagne. We'll take care of you. <laughs> Poor Susie. I warned her. Too bad. She couldn't have listened to advice from an expert. What are you doing here alone? What? Franz Brenner, publicity man at the theater. Hasn't anyone ever warned you about me? Franz Brenner? Oh, yes. Why aren't you on the show tonight? I told him I wasn't feeling well. Oh, I see. He came down with a mumps tonight. But you'll be all right for the matinee tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I won't say a word. What's happened to His Excellency? What? What kind of a publicity man wouldn't know who's been calling for you at the stage door every night? Did you get the air? Shut up. All right, all right. Let's dance. I'm not dancing. He's getting married tomorrow. Come on. You're alone, I'm alone. Let's get together. You're right back with us common folks now, so you might just as well not be so choosy. Mm -hmm. 
Juana. Millie Frisch kicked out of the chorus because she wouldn't go out with you. Mm-hmm. Brenda the cockroach, my friends call me. That suits you. What do you do to me if I don't go out with you? <laughs> You're out with me now, aren't you? Yes. Leave me standing oh, there. I would like to crawl away quietly somewhere and die. Oh, I'm going to play it for tragedy, are you? What do you mean? What's her count anyway? This isn't before the war. Waiter. Two double brandies on the double. Yes. What's about you and me, Susie? That's what's about you. You could do much worse. I probably will before I'm through. Hmm. Brandy, please. Waiter. Excuse me, I'll be back. Susie. What's the matter? Why did you wait for me this afternoon? I, I had another engagement. With that fellow? I couldn't believe that. Not of you, Susie. Why not? After these, well, after these last few weeks, I know so much about you. Your niceness, your sweetness. If you hadn't seen me here tonight, you'd just thought yourself lucky. Wouldn't you? I knew that had to be an end. Then why didn't you leave me alone tonight? Susie, why can't we say goodbye pleasantly? You're a sensible girl. Sensible? Oh, Carl, you've been with me every day for the last two weeks, and that's all you know about me. I'm a sensible girl. So sensible that every night I've dreamed of all the peasant girls in the storybooks of married princess. And all the shop girls in cinema who married millionaires and hoped and prayed that something like that would happen to me. That's sensible. You know now, Carl, that I love you so much that losing you is like losing a part of me. You better go back to your friends, Carl. Carl. Bar. I'll join you. Uh, I was just leaving. Reunion, eh? Right, I was just coming back to you. Hmm? I was just coming back to you. Come oh, on, let's go. I thought you'd checked out, excellent. Franz, come along. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm afraid he's had a little bit too much time. No, no, don't go yet, Countess. We're just about to get the big dramatic punch. Franz. The titled villain and the poor oh, but Franz, honest... darling, don't be an idiot. Hmm? Come on, let you and I go home, huh? Home? Let you and I go home. Come <laughs> on. Why not? Shall we go? Oh. Well, we certainly polished off his excellency. Oh, Yoli, this is Mr. Brennan, Miss Hyden, and Mr. Barton. I met you at Ben Horvath's, do you remember? Mm. It didn't take. It's something I picked up, Yoli, and I'm sorry. What do you mean? You picked me up. I picked you up. <laughs> Quite a pickup, eh? Huh. Franz, why don't you have some champagne? Oh, well, I don't mind if I do. Thank you. <laughs> We were just about to go. Oh, were well, you? How nice. I'll go with Excuse you. me. Oh, sure. Excuse me? Excuse me. Please, Susie. Oh, it's all right, Yoli. I don't need any lessons on how to behave like a lady. I've seen him, and I, I made a graceful exit. Now he has nothing to worry about. <laughs> My name is still Schmidt. Oh. We can go now. Thank you. Oh, uh, my hat, please. You don't mind if we drop you at the apartment, do you, dear? You 
see John's going practically any night. Oh, I... no, of course not. Thanks, anyway. Why, Rudy. I'm awfully glad I ran into you because I wanted you to know that I, I didn't really mean all those things I said this afternoon. Mm, that's all right. It was sort of a shock to me at first. I mean, you're working for... Well, I, I should have known that anyone as nice and sweet as you are could... Oh, I understand, Rudy. Martha, I, I know a place across the river. It's a Turkish restaurant. I, I, I was wondering... You can stop wondering right now. Taxi! Wonder what she's singing. Uh, no, I don't understand Turkish. She sings a very sad song. When moon come full, little lover always die. Always? You mean every month she has it? Yes, very sad song. Seems a very unscientific sort of place for you to discover. Yes, I haven't the slightest doubt it should be reported to the Department of Public Health. <laughs> I love it. Joe, this is the first time anybody's ever taken me any place late at night. Would you like some more wine? And Rudy, can you afford it? I told you I had new patients this week. Uh, another bottle of Tokai. Yes, sir. The one thing I don't want to talk about is patients. I'm so happy I don't need to talk at all. <laughs> I can hear your heart. My heart? My heart isn't on that side. Oh. Um, Rudy, what's polydigitalitis? Poly what? Polydigitalitis. I never heard of it. It's what makes Mr. Shanda drink so much to keep him worrying about it. Oh, Shanda, hmm? I was going to ask you about it this afternoon. Was that the real reason you came to see me? No. Polydigitalitis. But there isn't any such thing. And it's something he made up to make you feel sorry for him. Well, he couldn't have made it up. It runs in his family. Ah. <laughs> Rudy, uh, let's just sit quiet and listen to the music, huh? You... You are sorry for him, aren't you? Well, I certainly don't want to see him lose the use of his hands. Oh, so it's those tricky hands of his that fascinate you, hmm? No, it is not. Oh, I see. It's not only his hands. You're fascinated by everything about him, hmm? I don't know why I should get so excited. It was only to be expected. Oh, Rudy, a few minutes ago, everything was so pleasant and friendly. I'm only trying to discuss it in a friendly way. There's no reason why we can't look at it calmly. In the first place, a man like Mr. Shander is attracted to an entirely different type of woman. What he wants is mystery and glamour. Then there's nothing to worry about, is there? I'm not merely thinking about his feelings toward you. I'm considering your feelings toward him. Are you going to try and explain my feelings to me? Well, don't you want to be able to understand your emotional responses? Oh, I do understand them. Not thoroughly. You see, what we have is a fairly common occurrence. Young woman, type B, pronounced maternal instincts, comes in contact with masculine type D, temperamental, exotic personality. Result, young woman is dazzled. Her original desire to protect is transformed into romantic love. It's perfectly simple. I am not dazzled. Oh, yes, you are, but you don't know it. The important thing in diagnosing cases like... Cases, cases, is that what I am, a case? The important thing is to know what classification the patient fits into. I was reading about a case just the other oh, day. Oh, and you're worried because you can't analyze your feelings. You had it. Martha, wait. Jack, please. Martha, wait. Jack, Jack, please. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting so long. Anything wrong? No, I hope Martha would be there to take care of her, but... I gave her a sleeping tablet. I guess she'll be all right. Uh, shall we go to my place or where? Your place. 18 Alamere Street. Yes, sir. Fix, I got to pack your picture. What would I do in South America without it? Yeah. What do you use this for? Oh, that. The natives use it on their women when they don't behave. John. 
What are you going? Why? I thought you didn't want to know just when. Well, I didn't, but that was before I... Uh... I'm taking the six o'clock train tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow? Darling, have you forgotten what you said? Don't tell me when you are going. Just say that you have to go out to mail a letter or get a haircut and don't come back. And then there will be no silliness about saying goodbye. Did I say that? Yes, and a lot of other very sensible things. Just because I said that in the beginning doesn't mean that I... I acted like a 20-year-old boy. I'm so glad you didn't let me make a fool of myself. How much of a fool would you have made, I wonder? Oh, the limit, I guess. Do you know what I really came back to Budapest for? <laughs> to find a wife. Just what kind of a wife did you hope to find? Oh, some substantial soul that would stand life in, in a mining camp in the Andes. And are you sorry you didn't find her? I would have missed all the fun I've had with you. Yes, it has been fun, hasn't it? You know, I'd forgotten that there were women like you who know how to enjoy love instead of making it a tragedy. I'm glad I could contribute to your education. Is tonight goodbye? No, we could have lunch tomorrow. But your train leaves at six. Yes, why? Ben Horvath asked me to dine with him. I suppose he knew you were going. Yes, his office got my tickets. Are you going to dine with him? Why not? You wouldn't want me to lose any time, would you? Of course not. No, John, why do I say those things? Darling, help me to open my heart to you. I want you to know that, that really I... This is getting to be a habit with her. I thought she was supposed to be away in school. She is. What is it now? You thought you were going back to South America. How did you get here? I walked. Walk? From school? 30 miles? What shall I do with her this time? You might try a different hotel. Last time it was the Hungaria. Why not the Daniel Palace tonight? There's no reason he has to go to a hotel. Oh, excuse me. You know there isn't. Do whatever you want, John. I've been up since three o'clock this morning, and I'm so... I'm so... Oh. Poor kid. <laughs> what did you say, Yoli? Oh, I didn't say anything. Imagine her walking all that way. Yes. Very touching devotion, I call it. It is sincere, and I am touched by it. Poor kid. She must get some sleep. That reminds me. I must, too. I'll drive you home. Don't bother. I'll get a cab. Julie, why are you running away like this? I'm, I'm practicing so I can say goodbye gracefully tomorrow at the station. I don't understand you tonight. No? I'm afraid you never will. Oh. Good night. Good night. something wrong with us. Oh, with me at any rate. I thought I knew how to get along without love. Didn't know it was bothering you, though. What? Love. Oh. 
After tonight, I don't think it'll trouble me anymore. What do we do? Well, you've got to take the six o'clock train. Uh, everything was so simple until you popped up. What was wrong at the school? Did they beat you or did you know too much of what? Hey, you are not listening. Do you remember the head waiter at the Hungaria? When he said, and what would Madame desire? What? That was the night when we were visiting you, and Mother was ill, so you took me out to dinner alone. This was five years ago, yes. It was not only the waiter calling me Madame, it was... It was being out alone with you that made me feel... grown up. Grown up? Marie, I must make you realize that... It... I... Yes? I... That was the night I knew. What are you talking about? That there could not ever be anyone else for me but you. Nonsense. You are just a child in school. And it is not nonsense. I came back from school when I heard you were leaving. I would have got here if I had to swim all the way. And if you go to South America, I don't suppose I'll swim. But I'll get to you there somehow. But this is preposterous. <laughs> What difference does it make if you haven't thought of it before? I have done enough thinking about it for both of us. But I'm leaving this afternoon at six. See, now you are thinking about it. In Budapest, on your vacation, you can find plenty of elegant women who will share your good times with you. But in South America, where your work is, you want someone you can count on. Someone you know will love you always and, and always. How do you know these things? Because I love you. I couldn't simply take you with me. We'd have to be married. Now, what am I talking about? Oh, John, it would be so beautiful if you would. What is there about you that makes me believe everything you say? Only my love for you, but that can do anything. Was it you I wanted? I came back to Budapest to find. I thought I had trouble enough being the best man at Carl's wedding and trying to catch the train. Now I have my own wedding to worry about. Our wedding. <laughs> Our wedding. <laughs> Fritz. Oh, Fritz. Ooh. I thought you were grown up. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Um, oh, Fritz, uh, go down and buy another trunk. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, 7.30. Goodbye. I thought I heard the telephone. Was it for me? No, it was my boat. Oh, still waiting for that call from him? Martha? Yes? Bring me a glass of water. Coming. Thank you. Did I ever show you this trick? Mm. Do it again. Do it again. One spends a lifetime perfecting a trick like that, and you say, do it again, as though you were applauding a clown in the circus. Well, after all, perhaps that's what I am. A clown to amuse the rabble. Oh, no, Mr. Shander, don't say things like that. I suppose you envy me because of the position I'm in. Yes? Out there in front of the footlights with everyone's eye on you, it's... it's fine enough. It's a lonely sort of life. 
It's not until one gets home that one realizes the empty mockery of it all. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Oh, I understand. How long have you been here now? Three? Four weeks? Well, it just shows how mistaken one can be. About what? Well, I might as well admit it. I didn't engage you just because I needed a servant. There was something about the way you looked at me that first night. I had a feeling that you were a woman who would understand my loneliness. And that perhaps, sooner or later, we... Well, it just didn't happen, that's all. What didn't happen? Are you in love with someone? Ah, uh, there is someone. No, there isn't anyone. Uh, can't I get you a cigarette, Mr. Shander? Mr. Shander. Oh, Martha. Has being here meant nothing but just a job to you? Oh, yes. Well, what has it meant? Oh, I've been so happy doing things for you. I haven't felt like a servant at all. It's been nice knowing there was someone who wanted me to take care of them. Is that all? You haven't fallen in love with me? Just a little? In love? Well, haven't you sometimes hoped that I... Oh, Martha, have you no feeling for me at all? Well, I don't want you to be lonely. Lonely? You've never thought any more than that about me? No. Yes. That time you were sick in bed with a sore throat and I read to you. And then you went to sleep and I sat by your bed all afternoon. And I... You loved me then? Well, it, it gave me a very happy kind of feeling watching over you. Oh, Martha, you do love me. For a moment, I thought I was losing my grip. But, Martha, come back. I, I didn't mean... Do you wish something else, madame? Yes, another, please. Yes, madame. Why did you go there anyway? Just to see how bad you could really make yourself feel? No, I went there because I wanted to see if I'd imagined it right. Bride? Bridal bouquet, bridegroom and his regimentals. Yes, everything was just as I dreamed it. Except the bride. Did you see John there? Yes. Why, haven't you heard from him today? Jet. Oh, he's probably still busy. Oh, hello, honey. Hello. Hello. I'll bring you home so early. What's the matter? Here, take this. You look as if you needed it. Thanks. Come on, sit down. Martha. I've left Chandor. What happened? Well, I don't know. It was like one of his stage tricks. Why did he make this appear this time? Himself. Oh, I could have told you he was no good. You weren't in love with him by any chance, were you? Uh, I thought he really needed me. Yeah, and that way about a man gets me all mixed up. I guess I don't understand love. Oh, apparently none of us are very good at it, are we? You know, they ought to mark our report cards. Attendance excellent, arithmetic fair, failed in love. Except for Yoli, who knew enough not to take so. No, shut up. No, I won't shut up. I feel a speech coming. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, that's what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. There's this Mr. Paul Shandor. Why not? We can make him appear just as he makes rabbits appear. Come on, a toast. A toast to Shandor the Great, who condescended to raise the Baroness Corenier from a necktie peddler to his maid of all work. Judy, stop it. It's the right phrase, isn't it? Maid of all work, from putting him to bed when he comes home drunk to darning his socks and cleaning his bathtub. For which he paid her the princely sum of 15 kronen a week. And on top of that, mind you, 
allowed her the privilege of falling in love with him. I did not. Oh. You had enough champagne, Susie. Oh, no. Not enough to drink to the very noble Count Carl Anye. Quarts and quarts have been drunk to you today, Your Excellency. No toast quite like this. So all honors go to you. You who gallantly accepted the love of Susie Smith. Best of all, you let her dream her silly dreams until it was time for you to go away. Susie, don't. Then why is there just one more toast? Mr. John Barter. Mr. Barter, who tried to break the heart of Yoli Hyden, but didn't succeed. For the simple reason that the young lady hasn't got a heart. You don't stop it, I'll slap Yoli. <laughs> Poor John. Did you expect to leave Yoli crying her heart out as your train pulled away so she could go out to dinner with Ben Horvath with her eyes all red? Oh, it's silly, John. A lot you know about Yoli Hyden. A lot you know about her. <laughs> I, I thought uh, champagne was supposed to make you happy. What don't I know about you, Yoli? You know all the answers about men, don't you? Never let them know you love them and they won't hurt you. Keep laughing at them and they can't hurt you. Well, go on and laugh. <laughs> Yoli. Yoli, I'm sorry. The trouble with us is all we do is talk about love. Where are you going? I don't know. South America, maybe. You... Well, that makes it 100 percent. Boys three and girls nothing. I wonder what happens if you keep on drinking this. You get sick, you go to sleep. All right with me. Yes. Yes, a good sleep would settle everything. What do you suppose they talk about? Who? Carl and... How was Helena? You may as well forget them, Susie. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking. Not enough for a toast. There may be another. Huh? You 
night. I think you'll find your papers all in order. Thank you, Ben. I don't know how I'd have made it without you pulling strings for me. Hello. Hello, Ben. Hello. Uh, goodbye. John, are you? I have something to say to you. Before you tell me why you wanted to go without saying goodbye, I want you to hear it, no matter what your reason was. Yes, your name. It's simply... It's simply that I love you with all my heart. I meant to tell you so last night, only... Only my silly pride wouldn't let me. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. John! Oh, John! John, darling, I need your corner. What? John, darling, I need two corner for the border. Here. Thank you. I'll be with you in a moment. But don't hurry, I'm all right. I'm taking Marie to South America with me. We are to be married tomorrow in Vienna. It is not very easy to explain. You don't have to. She's someone you can believe when she says she loves you, isn't she? Yes. A few weeks ago, I would have laughed at you. But now I understand. Yes. I'm glad I could tell you how I feel about you. Even though you couldn't believe me and... And even though it is too late. Well, I guess there isn't much left to say, is there? Bless you, my darling. You're it. You'd better let me send you home my car. Thanks, Ben, but I... Yes, yes, I understand. Don't try to talk. Shall we drop into my place for a cocktail before I take you home? Stay away, please. Is there something else we can do? You can't let us yeah, Get some more coffee, quick. All right. I'm Martha, Martha, Martha. Please. Oh, here, you want some more please, coffee. Martha. What's the matter? I nearly killed Martha. What do you please, mean? Martha. You nearly... Don't warn, don't Martha. ask questions. Martha. I'll tell you later. Please, wake up, Martha. Martha, here. Hold it, please, will you? Hold it. Oh, Martha, wake up. Martha, wake up, please. Martha, stay awake, please. Martha. Martha, wake up, please. Keep her moving. Come on. Martha. Wake up, Martha. Martha, wake up, please. Please, Martha. wake up, Martha. Martha. Darling, please stay awake. Martha. Don't, Susie. I'm sorry, you I can't help her. Seeing Martha in there and thinking I nearly would lost her. I suppose I should want to forget Carl, but I don't ever. Loving him and having him love me even for a little while. Somehow to remember it will always make me proud. I'm really independent of men. We've learned a lot since we've been in here. We should put up a sign which reads, Young Ladies' School of Experience. <laughs> Hearts broken scientifically. <laughs> oh, stop it, Billy. Really. I'll get it. Hello, Doctor. Hello. And how are we feeling tonight? Missy Shinglepinger. Rudy, you've done wonders with your bedside manner. <laughs> oh my, we're getting popular. I know who that is. It's your late employer. I saw him at the desk downstairs in the lobby. Mr. Shander? Shall I send him away? He probably wants to know where I put his shirts. Mr. Shander! Let him come in. You sure you feel like it? Well, Martha, here he is. Martha. My poor, dear Martha. Would you like to sit down? Who is that? Dr. Imray. 
Oh, the rabbit man. When I telephoned, the concierge told me what had happened. Oh, was it an accident? Oh, it's very brave of you to say that, dear. I know you want to spare my feelings. Huh? Oh. But don't let this upset you. As a matter of fact, this is not the first time. What? I remember touching her hair as it lay spread over the cold marble slab. It was still wet. You mean she... because she was in love with you? She chose the river. <laughs> Why, Ma? Oh, oh, Mr. Chandler, would you stand up? What? Would you mind? I want to see something. Uh, now, just a... Uh, Walk a little and then turn around. There must be something about that medicine I took. It's done wonders for my eyesight. Just as though I could see through one of your disappearing acts. Shall I call the doctor? I can see a pair of patent leather shoes, a dress suit, a white tie, <laughs> and a shirt. A shirt? Well, what's the matter with my shirt? A pair of hands. Why, there's really nothing there at all. You're just an illusion, like one of your tricks. <laughs> doctor, doctor, come quickly. <laughs> doctor, doctor she, she's raging. Oh, no, I'm not raging. Oh, what does it all mean? She, she keeps talking about my suit, my shirt, my tie, my, my hands. Well, what's the matter? Oh, very interesting. Is there anything the matter with my hands? It looks like a real polydigitalitis. But, well, that's absurd. There, there, there's no such thing. I made that name up. Oh, well, how remarkable. You made up something that's taken years of research to diagnose. Well, well, well. But you're crazy, Doctor. There's nothing wrong with my hand. I'll prove it to you. You ever seen me do this trick? <laughs> oh, no, that's bad. You have it in both hands now. <laughs> oh, Rudy, I wouldn't mind being sick for a long time if I could sit here and watch you laugh like that. I love to see you happy. I am. Happiest day of my life. <laughs> what? I, I, I'm trying to tell you something. They've appointed me to the staff of the Institute. It's a real job. Do you know what that means? It means no more Mrs. Shinglepingers to worry about. Uh-uh. Just Mrs. Rudy Imrie. Martha, I, I was an awful numbskull, but when I got angry and said stupid things, it, it was because I was so ashamed of not being able to do anything at all for you. But now, oh, look at your pupils. You need rest. Look at your own pupils. <laughs> well, what would you expect? <laughs> oh, please say it if you're going to. Well, there wouldn't be much money, Martha. Rudy, can't you get the words out? Well, I... I think we should be married, Martha. So do I. Oh. Susie! Yoli! What? What's the matter? What is it? Well... That's better. Boys two, girls one. I'll leave this where I'm going. Oh, thanks, Shirley. <laughs> I have a picture of Mrs. Ben Horvath pressing Mr. Horvath's pants. I'll know how, anyway. <laughs> Just think, what a little while we've been here and all that's happened to us. Now we're leaving. What is she doing in there? Martha! Yes? Hurry up. Our cab will be waiting. I was taking a shower bath. <laughs> Martha, you know, I was just saying. Lots of people live a lifetime in a place and don't have so much happen to them. Only things didn't happen just as we'd hoped. Yes, they did. You wished for a hat shop, didn't you? 
Now, you actually own one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Yoli. You don't thank me, thank Ben. Yoli's going to have the rich husband. And what about you? I wished for a good home, a man to look after, and children. Well, I got a man who will look after me. And the home's good enough where he is. And for the rest, this is scarcely the time to discuss that. <laughs> Mom, hurry up. I'm paying for that cab. All right. Come on, Susie. I'm coming. Never mind, Susie. Oh, perfectly all right. All it needs is a new pot. Oh, come on. Well, come on, Martha. 